We've all seen this fight at this point, right? Akron and Sam duking it out and having an all-out enemy-esque brawl while the main character just watches. Both combatants moving faster than the eye can see and each almost eliminating the other. It's natural to think that given the circumstances, they are obviously adversaries. I mean, that's what I thought too. But what if all of this is staged? The entire fight was nothing but a lie and the truth of the matter is, Acheron is working with the Stellaron Hunters. This is what we'll be discussing in this video. Before I elaborate any further, if you want to see more Honkai Star Rail content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Like most of my other videos, especially the theory ones, in order to explain it in its entirety, I have to talk about portions of the story and lore that are going to be spoilery. So if you haven't completed the main Panacone quest, what exactly are you waiting for? Go and get it done and come back here as soon as possible. But in all seriousness, expect some spoilers here. Also, this is a theory video, so it might end up true, it might not, so don't take it too seriously and go into this with an open mind because I have to admit, this one's a bit out there. Given this video is mostly going to talk about Acheron and the Stellaron Hunters, you would think that one of them would be where I would start. But in order for one of my points to make sense later, I need to talk a little bit about Panacone's past, specifically about how it changed hands from the IPC to the family. Millennia ago, the planet that would be known as Panacone was a frontier prison operated by the IPC. They would send exiled prisoners to the planet to work on repairing a breach in reality that caused Memoria to leak out to the galaxy. Now we don't specifically know what Memoria does exactly, but after prolonged exposure, the prisoners were said to have experienced shared dreams. The longer they stayed there, the more of them were pulled into this dream world. Before long, a majority of them obtained and shared a single dream, to be free. Sometime after this, a Stellaron outbreak occurred on the planet and this is when the ownership of the planet changed hands for the first time. Most historical records of this period is spotty at best, but in the data bank, several factions were mentioned to have come to the aid of the prisoners. Among the factions said to have been present included the Morning Actors, the Masked Fools, the Nameless, and the Omen Vanguard. That last one is the important one here. Eventually, with everyone's help, the prisoners became the new rulers, but due to some instability among their ranks and likely the Stellaron, the planet was taken over by the family, who transformed it into what it is today. Fast forward to present day, practically every faction that is present on Panacone right now has had some involvement with the planet in the past. The IPC used to own it, the masked fools helped the prisoners, and the nameless were there as well. But who exactly today represents the Omen Vanguards, who, if you didn't know, is a faction that follows the Eon of Finality Terminus? Well, in the main story, it has been revealed to us by Aventurine that Acheron isn't associated with the Galaxy Rangers and is in fact an emanator. It's not specific about which path she follows but mentions one possibility being the finality which coincidentally is the path the Omen Vanguards follow. So could Acheron really be the representative of the Omen Vanguards? And if she is, what has that got to do with the Hunters? This is where it starts getting weird. The Stellaron Hunter's motivation mostly revolves around achieving Elio's plan. Elio is said to have the ability to see the future and is highly suspected to be aligned with Terminus and Finality. You know who else follows the Finality and views the ramblings of Terminus as prophecy? The Omen Vanguards. On top of that, the chat we had with Acheron at the start of Panacone seems to indicate that she knows something about the future given she asked the main character about whether they would continue their journey if they knew how it would end. You know, the red text stuff. So if Acheron is from the Omen Vanguard and Elio has some association with Terminus and Finality, wouldn't it be plausible at least for followers of Finality, in this case Acheron and Elio, to be working together? This isn't even the end of this convoluted train of thought, far from it. You see, another part of the Stellaron Hunter's plan, as revealed by Kafka, is related to Nanook. At some point in the future, the Eon of Destruction would get really close to destroying the universe. To prevent that from happening and to get the ending that they want, they are currently setting up the main character to be able to oppose Nanook itself. The hunters are even ensuring that the main character has allies such as the Xianzo Alliance so that when they fight, the trailblazer has a stronger chance of winning. 
Outside of making the main character stronger and building a strong team around him, I also happen to think they are doing everything to make Nanook weaker. If you recall, in one of Kafka's trailers, it's shown that the hunters were responsible for the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood, a faction of the Annihilation Gang who follow Nanook. While this did functionally weaken Nanook since he has one less group to support him in the event of a fight, their downfall resulted in a power vacuum that caused another faction from the Annihilation Gang, the Everflame Mansion, to grow in power. You know, the group Duke Inferno led. So it would seem that despite the Hunter's efforts, the Annihilation Gang are still strong enough to come to the aid of Nanook. Unless someone took care of them too. Would you care to guess who took care of Duke Inferno and his little group? Well, according to the IPC Intelligence Network and Aventurine, it was Acheron. Now Aventurine claims she did it to get the invitation from the group so that she can enter Panaconi. But when the Nameless first arrived, it seemed really difficult to change ownership of an invitation. Despite the Trailblazer and Dunhang both coming from the same group, transferring the room booking to the main character seemed impossible until Aventurine and even Mr. Sunday having to come in to resolve it. So why would Acheron with Duke Inferno's invitation not face the same level of difficulty? Wouldn't it make more sense if she was a stowaway as well, like Sam and Silverwolf? Speaking of Silverwolf, there's another weird thing that could be explained by Acheron associating with the Hunters. When the main character and Black Swan entered the Hidden Dreamscape, they could only do so because of the code Silverwolf provided them. Later on, we meet Sam there as well, and it's not really a surprise given Silverwolf likely gave him the code as well. But how exactly did Acheron arrive there? Something even Black Swan was suspicious about. Either she had some other means not yet revealed, or Silver Wolf gave her the code as well, which if they were working together, wouldn't be a surprise. All of these coincidences, and they could be just that, coincidences, does seem to point to the idea that Acheron and the Hunters are really working together, given they might actually share the same god. Either that, or there is a buttload of coincidences here that seem to benefit both the Hunters and Acheron. If this really turns out to be true, everything we have seen so far has to be re-examined. The entire fight we see between Acheron and Sam could have likely been staged, and perhaps even why Acheron didn't save Firefly when she had the chance, given she suspected to be Sam. Even Black Swan hints at this, saying we shouldn't interfere with the dancers on the stage, almost like saying it's a performance. Maybe there are layers and layers of feints, manipulations, and tricks here that are all meant to either manipulate the main character or to achieve some other end we just don't know yet. Maybe it's a good cop bad cop thing, where Sam pretends to be the antagonist, pushing the main character into the arms of Firefly or Akron. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into this and everything is just coincidence with Akron being someone else entirely. Whatever the case may be, it seems rather convenient that a lot of the mystery surrounding Akron could be somewhat explained through her association with the Hunters. There just seems to be too many things that overlap between Akron and the Hunters, at least in the context of Panaconi. I honestly don't know if this will end up being true, but this does make me really hunger for more of the story. What do you think? Could it be possible that Akron is really working with the Hunters, or that just isn't possible? Let me know in the comments. If you had fun watching this video, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and as usual, have a nice day.